In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create amazing transitions using masks so you can use them in your videos. Specifically, I'll teach you how to make the famous transition where an element passes close to the camera, generating the transition to another video. And you'll be able to do it in the free version of DaVinci Resolve, so there's no excuse. Let's get started. In this tutorial, we'll use a video showing a statue and a column moving close to the camera. For this transition, we'll need a video with an element that completely moves from one end of the screen to the other. This column will be key to creating our transition. After the column passes on the left side, we'll place another different video clip, this other clip here. So that you can see it clearly, this is the final result we want to achieve. Cool, right? It's important that both videos have the same camera movement for the transition to look good. That is, if in the first video the camera moves to the left, we have to make sure that in the second video there's also a leftward camera movement. This way, we'll achieve a smoother and more natural transition between the two clips. To start creating the transition, we need to place the playhead above the clip where we'll create the mask. Then we go to the color module in DaVinci Resolve. Once inside the color module, we need to create a completely new node. We'll create the mask in a node without any previous adjustments. Left click on the last node and add serial node. Great. In my case, I'm gonna create the mask in node three. Select node three and then open the power windows menu. In this menu, Look for and select the mask option with the pen icon. This mode allows us to create a mask in any shape we want. So we can create a mask in the shape of the column that appears in our video. To start creating the mask, I advise you to find a frame in the video where the edge of the column can be fully seen. Well, it's important to know what we need to select with the mask we're going to create. We need to select the part of the video we want to keep. In other words, we must select the entire column and the entire right part of the video where the statue appears. We don't need to select the left part with the background where the trees appear, as we're going to replace it with the other different video to create the transition. In summary, we need to create a mask that only selects the part of the video we want to keep. All right, having said that, let's create the mask. To create the mask correctly, zoom in on the viewer. We can zoom in by moving the mouse wheel. And if we hold down the mouse wheel, we can move the video in the viewer. To create the mask, simply left click to mark a point, then left click again to create another point. This way, we'll create new points following the edge of the column. It's not complicated. We'll keep left clicking and create all the necessary points to select the edge of the column correctly. The more precise you make the selection, the better the final result will be. Perfect. Once we finish selecting the entire edge, we'll extend the mask to cover the entire space on the right. Remember that to the right of the column, we have the part of the video with the statue. We must also include this in our selection. To finish our mask, we need to close it by joining the last point we created with the first one. Once you finish the mask, you can zoom in to check that the mask selection is correct. If you need to create new points, simply left click on the line and adjust it to improve the selection. To see what we have selected with the mask, we can click on the highlight icon. This will only display the mask selection. Now, let's deactivate these lines and points on the mask border to better observe the contour we've selected. Click on this small arrow and select the off option. As you can see, the edges are very abrupt and don't look natural it's very noticeable that we've trimmed the video with a mask. To enhance the appearance and soften these edges, I suggest applying a slight blur to the mask edge. We can do this in the softness section by increasing the value soft one. Adjust the blur level until you achieve a more natural appearance. For example, I'll set it to 0.94. Perfect. As you can see, it looks much better now. Once we've fixed the mask edges, we can re-enable the Power Windows function to see the mask selection again. And we can also deactivate the highlight function that we activated earlier. If we play the video or switch frames, we'll notice that the mask doesn't follow the video's movement. 
This is because we created the mask in a single frame of the video. This part of the tutorial isn't necessarily difficult, but it will take quite some time because we need to adjust the mask to exactly follow the column's movement. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do it now. The first step is to open the Keyframes menu in the DaVinci Resolve Color Module. You might have another menu open. Open the Keyframes menu by clicking on this icon here. The second step is to look at the correctors. As you can see, I have Corrector 1, Corrector 2, Corrector 3. These correctors are associated with the nodes. You must check in which node you created the mask. In my case, I created the mask in node number 3. So we'll use Corrector 3 to create keyframes in the mask. To create a keyframe, click on this small diamond on the left. This diamond must appear in red to create keyframes. Next, make any changes to our mask so that the first keyframe is created. For example, I'm going to move this circle a bit here. We don't have to do anything special. As you can see, it has already created a keyframe for us. It's right here. The next step will be to create more keyframes so that the mask follows the column's movement throughout the entire video. We created the first keyframe here, so we'll have to create more keyframes to the left and to the right. Let's start with the left side. So we'll focus on this part here. And once we finish this part, we'll do the right side. Perfect. To begin, move the playback head three or four frames to the left. Then go to the viewer and left click inside the mask to move its position. Place it as best as possible, right where the column is. Now we'll adjust the mask points to fit correctly with the column's shape. If you need to create new points on the mask, simply left click on the line to create new points. Once we've finished readjusting the mask, move three or four times to the left again and do the same thing. Correctly position the mask and adjust the points to the shape of the column. There's not much mystery here. We'll change the frames in the video and readjust the mask correctly. This way, we'll make sure the mask follows the same movement and shape of the column throughout the entire video. Perfect. Once we've finished following the column with the mask and it no longer appears in the video, don't forget to completely remove the mask because if you leave any part of the mask in the video, you'll have an odd patch right in the middle. So at the end, remember to remove the mask. Perfect. The next step will be to review the mask frame by frame. That is, check the intermediate frames where we haven't created keyframes and ensure that the mask is correctly positioned on the column. There might be moments in between where the mask doesn't align properly. To fix this, review each frame individually and adjust the mask when necessary. In this example, because the column has a rather complex shape, the mask may often not align perfectly. But in videos with simpler objects like lampposts or trees, the mask is more likely to align in most frames, requiring fewer adjustments. All right, we're done. We've created all the necessary keyframes on the left side. Now we need to do the same on the right side. We need to create keyframes until the column reaches the edge of the frame. The process is exactly the same. We advance three or four frames and adjust the mask. Important, remember that the mask should select everything we want to keep in the video. Don't leave the background part with the statue unselected. In simple terms, the part of the background with the statue must be within the mask and the part of the background with the trees must be outside the mask. Perfect. Having said that, the last thing I need to explain about masks is that if we click on this line with two protruding points, we can give the line a curved shape. This is perfect for improving the selection and adapting it to curved edges. I'm going to speed this up so you can see the process. We are done. Remember to remove the piece of the mask in the last frame. And to conclude, we'd have to go frame by frame, reviewing and adjusting the mask in the frames where it's incorrect, just like we did before. Well, as you've seen, manually creating masks takes quite a bit of time. If you have the free version of DaVinci Resolve, this is the only way to do it. But if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio, I might show you a trick to do all this in three to five seconds. Wait until the end of the tutorial. Okay, 
we're almost done with the transition. As you can see, now the mask will perfectly follow the movement and shape of the column throughout the entire video. The next step is to remove the part of the video that we haven't left outside the mask, this part here. To do this, right-click on the node panel and look for the option Add Alpha Output. This blue circle that just appeared is the alpha output. To remove the background, we have to connect the node where we created the mask to the alpha output, like this. Perfect. We've removed what we didn't want, and now we have only the column with the background part of the statue. We can now finish the transition. Let's go back to the DaVinci Resolve editing module. This is the clip where we created the mask and removed a part of the background. We need to place this clip on a higher video track. Let's put it on video track 2. Great! Now it's as simple as placing the next video clip we want to transition to just below it. This way, the second clip will appear in the space we removed. We need to ensure that the clip is correctly positioned throughout the entire transition. At this point, the removed background part still appears. Therefore, we need to find the exact frame where this removed part no longer appears. In this frame, it's no longer visible. Place the bottom clip right at this frame, and done. We would have the transition finished. Let's see how it turned out. Not bad. The transition looks quite natural, and the final result is very good. You can further enhance it by adding a sound effect and giving it an extra touch. Okay, we've finished the transition, but wait a second. What if I tell you it's possible to make this same transition in less than one minute, almost automatically? However, you'll need the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, meaning the paid version. Let's see how to do it. In this method, we need to duplicate the column clip. You can do this by copying and pasting the clip, or by selecting the clip and pressing the Alt key while dragging with the mouse to duplicate it. Check that it's correctly placed. They must be in exactly the same position. This is important. All right, select the upper clip, place the timeline head on top of it, and then head to the DaVinci Resolve color module. Within the color module, we must go to the Magic Mask panel, this one here. Now, with the selector activated, this icon with the plus symbol, and with the option Toggle Mask Overlay, to view the mask we'll create highlighted in red, just place the mouse cursor over the viewer and left click. Start drawing this blue line along the column. Perfect, we've got it. In case it's also selected parts of the background or other incorrect areas, select the selector icon with the minus symbol. Then trace a red line over the areas you want to remove. Great, now we've selected only the column. To improve the mask selection, I recommend changing from faster mode to better mode. The final result will be much better. Remember in the previous example, we've been creating a bunch of keyframes and correcting the mask over and over? Well, look how fast it is to do this with Magic Mask. Click on the tracking icon, the one with two arrows. And there you go. Now the mask perfectly follows the movement of the column. What previously took us about 20 minutes, we've now done automatically in just three seconds. It's incredible. We can deactivate the toggle mask overlay icon so that the mask no longer appears highlighted in red. And now the process of creating the transition is very similar to before. Left click in the node panel and add an alpha output. Connect the node where we made the magic mask with the alpha output like this. Perfect, back to the editing module. In the upper clip, we have the magic mask we just created. And in the lower clip, we have the original video without any changes. If we remove the lower clip, we'll see that in the upper clip, we only have a mask of the column. Knowing this, let's select the original clip, the lower clip, and position ourselves at the frame where the transition begins, just before the background starts to appear from the left side in this frame here. Next, head to the Inspector panel and expand the Cropping menu. We'll crop the original clip from the left side. We'll crop the video following the movement of the column. 
Create the first keyframe by clicking on this diamond icon, then move the video a bit. And now we'll crop all this part of the background, making sure to place the cut just behind the column. We'll keep cropping the left part until we reach the column area. As you can see, it has created a new keyframe for us. Great, let's move the video a bit further and now we'll need to crop this part of the background. Again, we'll crop the video from the left. This way, we'll remove the video from the left side of the column to create this transition. We've got a piece of the video left, so let's crop this part completely. Perfect, we're done. Now simply select these two clips and drag them to an upper video track. And to finish the transition, place the last video beneath these two clips. And that's it. That simple, we've created a transition using masks much faster. If you want to learn a lot of effects, here's my complete DaVinci Resolve course. You can watch it for free on YouTube in this playlist. And that's all for today. See you in the next video.